You Make It We Market is a series where we give our viewers the opportunity to become aeronautic engineers. These viewers are allowed to use their imagination and creativity to come up with unusual shapes and materials in their designs. We then accelerate their concepts to over 1,000 miles per hour and record it on a high-speed camera. The high-speed camera doesn't lie and the results are often surprising and impressive. Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flutter Mouse. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to do another round of tests using these ceramic projectiles made by Evan Perry from Texas. Last year Evan created about 12 of these. We didn't have time to film all 12 of them, so we split it up and we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. Evan created these using parts from a microwave oven magnetron and there's a good possibility some of these may contain beryllium oxide, so don't try this at home kids. We will have to treat these like they do contain beryllium oxide as the dust is supposed to be hazardous to you. When we tested these last year we were getting around 1400 feet per second. This time we want to speed things up and we want to try to get them to around 2000 feet per second if possible. Since they are so lightweight we definitely have a lot of headroom to get them up to much higher velocities than we did in the first test. This time we have a lot of different targets that I hope you'll enjoy seeing. Okay, if it'll go through a quarter inch stainless steel, I will be impressed. We'll put it, we put a Kevlar uh, body armor panel behind it to maybe catch whatever's coming out the back, if it, if it does come out. All right, the first target is one quarter inch stainless steel plate. Now we were thinking that a very hard material like ceramic going at a very high velocity hitting a stainless steel plate might possibly go through it, but it did not. But on a positive note, it was amazingly accurate. Now since people like comparisons, here is a one ounce foster slug made out of lead traveling at 1560 feet per second. It didn't pierce the plate either. It just left a much larger dent in the plate. Now from this first test we can at least conclude that the ceramic projectile is not armor piercing. We always want to find out what possible use something like this could have. Now oddly some viewers will tell us you've got to shoot at the same target every time for every shot so you get an objective analysis. But honestly I think most people would watch about two minutes of that and say this is uh, not getting anywhere and it's boring. Next we'll see how these do against a aluminum plate. It's a little dark out today overcast running a high-speed camera at I think 3,000 frames a second sort of around 9,000 hopefully it'll still be cool 1806 once again very impressive accuracy this time we had full penetration the ceramic projectile acted like a wad cutter, punching out a nearly perfect circle out of this plate. That looked pretty good. Right on target. Yeah, it almost erased that entire red mark there. Um, pretty good for, that was our sighting in round, you know, and it Mass looks like it's dead on accurate. Mass accelerator and I am the operator. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah, so it, it went cleanly through that 3 8 inch um, aluminum plate which isn't a big deal you know a lot of things will go through that that one just knocked the plug out of it didn't tear this one tore whatever that was yeah that one clean I have one job to do <laughs> okay lead plate I, where, where are you aiming at? <laughs> I think we got it. You better hold your breath, folks. This is going to get dusty. Again, we had pretty good accuracy. It was just off a little bit. That could have been human error. The lead plate is a comparative medium that we often use to compare one type of projectile to another. 
and typically a heavier projectile made out of steel, brass, copper, or something like that will do a lot more damage to the plate than something light and very frangible like ceramic. Point of aim, point of impact. And that one was a little bit odd because Jeff left a component out of that one round. This is like a cork uh, spacer. Cork spacer. Yeah. A cushion under the ceramic slug. I, I thought that might help prevent it from shattering or whatever, but apparently that didn't wasn't really necessary. But I'm gonna turn this thing around here. It hit it hard enough; it cracked it. Oh, okay. That thing's uh quite thick, uh, inch and a half thick or so. Mm, inch and a quarter. Uh, this is one of those 25 pounders. Okay. But sitting about like that, so I hit just a little bit to the right. That's still pretty good for something so unconventional. <laughs> These are as unconventional as you can get. Bits and pieces all over the table. Yeah, here. be careful. That's beryllium. Really? <laughs> Don't lick it. <laughs> People are. Are, are wiggling in their chairs as you do the. It tastes like strawberry. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, that leads to what? Ballistic gel. Ballistic jelly. Ballistic jelly. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think you think it'll uh, the ceramic will shatter inside there or go all the way through? That's the question I have. That's that's a good question. Being a soft target. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you're ready. All right. Here we go. <laughs> now at first I thought that the clear ballistic gel would not make a very suitable target for this type of projectile, but it turns out... Oh, I was so wrong. But it turns out that these would be devastating on a fleshy target. And to think that we almost didn't do the ballistic gel test. And another thing, it was completely overcast that day and we had to run the camera at a much lower uh, frame rate, only about 4,000 frames a second. And as you can see, the ceramic projectile just turned into a grenade, sending uh, sharp shards of ceramic all over the place, but no overpenetration. Now, I'm kind of glad that nobody actually makes these projectiles to sell because uh, we're talking about war crimes or something here. It's all washed off. Darn it, Danny, you need to strap that down. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see how much energy the, is on the block and see how much uh, it gets thrown around and stuff. Yeah. And you couldn't really see it if you had it strapped down because well, that's part of the equation is how much energy is being transferred to the gel. When the gel block uh, doesn't move that much, there's not much energy <clears throat> being you know, captured by the gel. But when something like a ceramic slug going, you know, 1,800 feet per second hits it and shatters inside of it and dumps pretty much all its energy into it, then it jumps around, you know? Yeah, then we can do a little nice little dance there. Yeah, that is not yeah. a very pretty gel block. Uh, we were uh, well, we weren't even planning to shoot the gel, but we had it with us just in case we needed an extra target. This thing is well beyond needing to be recast, of course. So flip, flip it around so we can see the damage. It's, it's quite impressive, though. Entry hole here. Okay. And let's go to this side here. This is the top. We can see through it the best, I think. I can't see crap. And not too well there. Go, flip it around there 90 degrees there. Let's try that. There you go. Okay. I think people will be able to see that. It just uh, exploded inside there. And this side's not too bad here. Okay, keep rotating it. Oh, look at that. But just a huge streak coming out here. The main body of it is right. Yeah, there's here. a there is a piece of it. You have a knife to cut it out of there? Maybe. Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna okay. hurt that gel block. You, you get an idea how hard it is to cut through this stuff. It's uh, it's like cutting through a block of silicone or something. When I cut it up to remelt it, I, I use a bread knife. So it was a white one, huh? Uh, What's maybe that? that was a white one. Yep. Okay. There's white chunks in there. Oop. But uh, I, I I didn't know if it would shatter in there or go you know or go all the way through. So that's really interesting. I I thought it had a good chance of going through. No. 
What's that other big pink thing in there? Because I thought that was a piece of it right there. Can you cut that out of there? You see what I'm it's, talking yeah. about? It's right down there just below that white piece. Hopefully the next time we see this block it'll be cast and, and look in a little better shape than that. What is that? That is a... Oh, an overshot card. Overshot card. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, we thought that was the main body of that, it there. That wasn't even in there. I didn't even load that in there. Huh. That was from something else, apparently. But the wad... Oh, yeah, the wad is... Followed it in. The sabo, the green sabo. Oh. Pinky deep. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing but a bunch of little pieces in there. Yeah. Some of them exited. This one came all the way out to here and exited. On the preliminary high speed, I saw pieces going in about eight inches or something and exiting, just shooting out the sides. That would be a horrible uh, injury. Mm. Imagine that that hard ceramic just going through through all that soft body uh, through your through your flesh and organs and stuff like that. Just wicked. Well, there you go. Glad we were able to test those again. Incredibly accurate for something uh, for, for for something homemade, you know. I'm, I'm really impressed with the accuracy of them. Well, only, you know, some of them were just off by an eighth of an inch or something like that, but very accurate and uh, stable projectile. Just nasty. Okay, let's see what it'll do. That three smartphones. Take that, Richard Ryan. Bam! Seventeen forty-six. Just another random and oddball target. Again, incredible accuracy. When Danny's on fire, he's on fire. And we keep hoping that one of these days when we hit a lithium-ion battery, it's going to explode or catch on fire or something. But so far, we've never been able to do that. Okay, so if you want to protect yourself from a a ceramic slug going to, what, 1,800 feet per second or mm -hmm. so, you need three phones, three smartphones. Yeah, first one didn't do you any good. Second one didn't do much good. We couldn't find the battery for this one. Yeah, we looked all over. Possible. May not have been one in there, I don't know. Possibly. And... There's your protection, your third phone. <laughs> I don't think it passed the bend flex test, you know? Mm. Look at that, how deformed that, camp, that that thing is. But it didn't go all the way through the third one. <laughs> Did a lot of damage though, my gosh. That case there didn't take much abuse. Look out, that battery might just start exploding on you. Got it. I think you got it. <laughs> now, I always thought that pool balls were very hard to break, but as you can see, if you hit it with a ceramic slug going 17 or 1800 feet per second, it's going to shatter like crazy. We didn't expect that. I thought it would just kind of bounce off the thing. Thank you, Evan, for sending these to us. They were an absolute pleasure to film and to shoot. These were definitely a win. They were both accurate and stable in flight and they had characteristics that we don't normally see in a traditional projectile. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.